Personal development is a lifelong process that the influence on it are numerous genetic, family, socio-economic, education, gender under which self-identify or self-concept plays a very important role. Your beliefs of yourself not only determines your relationship with others, but gives a huge insight about yourself. Quite often, we wonder asking oneself, who am I? Evaluating our behaviors and that of others. You see yourself behaving different in varied situations and how behavior has changed dramatically over the years. Your needs and assessing yourself have also changed over the years. For example, during your school days, Owning a cycling bike might be highest priority but today owning a car is your dream. The same logic may apply to how your interaction with others both in formal and informal setting go through a major change. In this chapter, let's focus on two most important contribution towards personal development. Firstly, Self-identity. Second, human relationships. Self-identity. According to Webster, self-identity refers to the quality that makes a person or thing different from others. It gives an overall assessment of your weakness, strengths, abilities, knowledge, including your past and future self. During adolescence and young adulthood, we spend considerable amount of time to figure out who we are and how we differ from others. By now, you must have developed certain belief about yourself or simple way you have an understanding of your own personality. Concept of Self in the process to understand oneself, one cannot ignore the role of society. As our interactions and observations with parents, friends, teachers play a prominent role in shaping us. Our experiences from these form our ideals about us. The self as a personal as well as a social self. Personal identity. Personal identity refers to those attributes of a person that are unique, those that make her or him different from others. It may be how they define themselves regarding their name, characteristics, qualities or their talents or limitations. For example, I am Sunni. I am a hard working student and also I love to play guitar instrument but I am weak in playing chess. Thus, he is disclosing of his own personal identity. Social identity. Social identity refers to one's social or cultural aspects that one feel and belong to such as nationality, religion, families, gender roles specific to one's country. The group that we belong to tend to influence our perception beliefs and behavior. For example, when someone says he or she is a Hindu or Muslim or a North Indian or South Indian, these things indicate one's social identity. Thus, social identity refers to the totality of an individual experiences, thoughts and feelings with regard to oneself. These experiences and ideas define the existence of an individual both at the personal as well as social levels. 
सेल्फ एस्टीम सेल्फ एस्टीम हैज बीन डिफाइंड एज द डिग्री टू विच द सेल्फ इज परसिव्ड पॉजिटिवली और नेगेटिवली दैट्स वंस ओवरऑल एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स द सेल्फ द मोस्टली सेल्फ एस्टीम इज यूज्ड बाय साइकोलॉजिस्ट एंड सोशल साइकोलॉजिस्ट टू डिटरमाइन वेरियस आउटकम इन वंस लाइफ्स सच एज एकेडमिक अचीवमेंट marital success body image language and so on eric erickson and self identity eric erickson a prominent developmental theorist of the 1950s developed a psychosocial theory of human development which covers the entire life span including adulthood according to him one must resolve two life crises during adolescence according to erickson's theory the way a person resolves the crisis will determine their personal identity and future development the theory explains psychosocial development comprising eight stages from infancy to adulthood during each stage the person experiences a psychological crisis which could have a positive or negative outcome for personality development according to erickson the ego develops as it successfully resolves crises that are distinctly social in nature these involve establishing a sense of trust in others developing a sense of identity in society and helping the next generation prepare for the future for erickson these are psychosocial nature because they involve psychological needs of the individual that is psycho conflicting with the needs of society it is social according to theory successful completion of each stage results in a healthy personality and the acquisition of basic virtues basic virtues are characteristic strengths which the ego can use to resolve subsequent crises failure to successfully complete a stage can result in a reduced ability to complete further stages and therefore a unhealthier personality and sense of self these stages however can be resolved successfully at a later time in fancy birth to 18 months old basic trust versus mistrust hope during the first or second year of life the major emphasis is on the mother and father's nurturing ability and care for a child especially in terms of visual contact and touch the child will develop optimism trust confidence and security if properly cared for and handled if a child does not experience trust he or she may develop insecurity worthlessness and general mistrust to the world toddler or early childhood years autonomy versus shame will the second stage occurs between 18 months and 3 years at this point the child has an opportunity to build self esteem and autonomy as he or she learns new skills and right from wrong the well cared for child is sure to have himself carry himself or herself with pride rather than shame during this time of the terrible twos defiance temper tantrums and stubbornness can also appear children tend to be vulnerable during this stage sometimes feeling shame and low self esteem during an inability to learn certain skills preschooler that is 3 to 5 years initiative versus guilt purpose during this period we experience a desire to copy the adults around us and take initiative in creating play situations we make up stories with toy phones and miniature cars 
playing out roles in a trial universe, experimenting with a blueprint or what we believe it means to be an adult. We also begin to use that wonderful world for exploring the world wide. While Erickson was influenced by Freud, he downplays biological sexuality in favor of the psychosocial features of conflict between child and parents. Nevertheless, he said that at this stage, we usually become involved in the classic Oedipal struggle and resolve this struggle through social role identification. If we are frustrated over natural desires and goals, we may easily experience guilt. The most significant relationship is with the basic family. The school age childhood, industry versus inferiority competence. During this stage, often called the latency, we are capable of learning, creating and accomplishing numerous new skills and knowledge. Thus, developing a sense of identity, this is also a social stage of development and if we experience unresolved feelings of inadequacy and inferiority among our peers. We can have serious problems in terms of competence and self-esteem. As the world expands, our most significant relationship is with the school and neighborhood. Parents are no longer the complete authorities. They once were although they were still important. Adolescent, 12 to 18 years. Identity versus role. Confusion, fidelity. Until this fifth stage, development depends on what is done to a person. At this point, development now depends primarily upon what a person does. An adolescent must struggle to discover and find his or her own identity while negotiating and struggling with social interactions and fitting in and developing a sense of morality and right from wrong. Some attempt to delay entrance to adulthood and withdraw from responsibilities. Moratorium. Those unsuccessful with this stage tend to experience role confusion and upheaval. Adolescents begin to develop a strong affiliation and devotion to ideals, causes and friends. Young adult that is 18 to 35 years. Intimacy and solidarity versus isolation. Love. At the young adult stage, people tend to seek companionship and love. Some also begin to settle down and start family life, although seems to have been pushed back further. Young adults seek deep intimacy and satisfying relationships, but if unsuccessful isolation may occur, significant relationships at this stage are with marital partners and friends. Middle-aged adult that is from 35 to 55 or 65 years of age. Generativity versus self-absorption or stagnation. Care. Career and work are the most important things at this stage. Along with family, middle adulthood is also the time when people can take on greater responsibilities and control. In this stage, one works towards establishing stability. Erickson's idea of generativity that is attempting to produce something that makes a difference in society. Inactivity and meaninglessness are common fears during this stage. Major life shifts can occur during this stage. For example, children leave the household 
careers can change and so on. Some may struggle with finding purpose. Significant relationships are those within the family, workplace and other communities. Late adulthood. This starts from the age 55 or 65 till the death. Integrity versus despair wisdom. Erickson believed that much of his life is prepared for the middle adulthood stage and the last stage involves much reflection. As older adults, some can look back with a feeling of integrity, that is contentment and fulfillment, having led a meaningful life and valuable contribution to society. Others may have a sense of despair during this stage, reflecting upon their experiences and failures. They may fear death as they struggle to find a purpose to their lives, wondering what was the point of life? Was it worth it? Human Relationships Human relationships, or also known as interpersonal relationships, is simply defined as relationships between two or more people. It's a social and emotional interactions between one or more persons in any given environment. The duration may include short term to long term. Types of interpersonal relationships. The following are some of the types of interpersonal relationship. Family includes child, parent, siblings. Marriage between partners. Relationships between friends. Relationships between co-workers, also intra and inter teammates. Stages of interpersonal relationships. The ABCDE model, according to famous psychologist George Livinger, every relationship goes through following five stages. This model is specifically explaining a romantic relationship. A. Acquaintance and attraction. This is on surface level the initial attraction wherein we meet people and feel an instant connection, often based on physical appearances, similar likes and dislikes. B. Build up. People become increasingly independent each other. They reveal more about their private lives. In this stage, one might get irritated with one another. Some relationships may discontinue at this stage. If they still like each other, they continue to next level. C. Continuation or consolidation. Longer term. Commitments are made such as marriage. The partnership enters what may be lifelong stable relationship. D. Deterioration. Many relationships decay due to several factors. These include relative effort, rewards, barriers to exit such as marriage and social obligation and the availability of alternatives. E. Ending. The relationship ends when partners agree to separate or one leaves. Factors affecting interpersonal relationship. The different factors which affect interpersonal relationship are given below. Communication. Communication plays a pivotal role in a healthy and effective interpersonal relationship. Feelings must be expressed and reciprocated in relationships. People need to communicate with each other effectively for better understanding. Lack of communication can lead to problem and misunderstanding. Staying in touch is essential for a relationship to grow. Empathy. The ability to put oneself in others place and see things from that person's point of view. Compatibility. When two people to have a healthy interpersonal relationship, 
must be compatible with each other. There should be no scope of conflicts as and misunderstandings in interpersonal relationship. It is easier to have a healthy interpersonal relationship when people are coming from similar backgrounds, attitudes, thought processes. In the scenario, they differ, people find it difficult to adjust and hence fail to have a healthy interpersonal relationship. Honesty Honesty is very important for a healthy and long-lasting interpersonal relationship. This honesty leads to distrust which puts strain in the relationships. Transparency is important in relationships. Staying calm, overreacting on any issue disrupts a healthy relationship. It is necessary to stay calm. It is better to be a little more adjusting. Saying sorry helps in the development of interpersonal relationship. It solves several issues. Forgiving. People need to be a little more forgiving for having healthy interpersonal relationship. Any issues between each other need not be dragged unnecessarily. Fighting over small issues is foolish and makes the situation all the worse. Smile. Smile creates situation which helps solving many issues. A flash of smile can help people coming out from awkward situation. Hence, during interaction, people with smile can be a good tool for having a positive interpersonal relationship. Time. Every relationship needs time and effort to grow. Time plays an important role in relationships. People need to spend adequate time to know each other better. People must spend quality time with their co-employees to strengthen the bond amongst themselves. This helps in having a healthy and effective interpersonal relationship. Sources of interpersonal conflict Where there are people, relationship tends to exist and so as conflict. We tend to sometimes project onto someone for the blame of the conflict. People tend to take down the conflict in various manners. Sometimes confront it or turn back from the situation completely. According to attribution theory, research indicates that fundamental attribution error has people attribute other behavior to personal factors such as intelligence, ability, motivation, attitudes, or personality. Wetton and Cameron explained four sources of interpersonal conflict. Personal differences. Everyone has a unique background because of his or her upbringing, cultural, family traditions and socialization processes because no one has the same family background, education and values. The differences can be a major source of conflict. Information deficiency. This source of conflict results from communication breakdown in the organization. It may be that the two people in conflict are using different information or that one or both have misinformation and like personal differences. This source of conflict is not emotionally charged and once corrected there is little resentment. Role incompatibility. This type of interpersonal conflict draws from both intra-individual role conflict and inter-group conflict. Specifically in today's horizontal organization Top and middle level management have functions and tasks that are highly interdependent. However, the individual roles of these personnel may be incompatible. Environmental stress. These types of conflict can be amplified by a stressful environment. In environments characterized by scarce and shrinking resources, downsizing, competitive pressures or high degrees of uncertainty, conflict of 
all kinds will be more probable. Analyzing interpersonal conflict. The Johari window, a very popular and commonly used descriptive tool for analyzing the interpersonal dynamics. Johari window, which is the most suitable and apt, developed by Joseph Loft and Harry Hinger. This model helps in identity several interpersonal style and shows aptly the gap between the self and others. In this activity, people become aware of certain things that the person knows about himself or herself and certain things that are not known. The same is true of others. There are certain things the person knows about the other and certain things that are unknown. The following summarizes the four cells in the Johari window. Firstly, open self represents traits of the subjects that both they themselves and their peers are aware of. People would be generally open and honest about this area. Most of the time, they don't lead to conflict. Secondly, the hidden self. In this situation, the person understands oneself but does not about the other person. The person actually remains hidden from the other, hiding the true feelings or attitudes secretly because of fear of judgment. Thirdly, blind self. The person knows about the others but not about oneself. For instance, the person could be unintentionally irritating to others, but people around him may not tell of the fear of hurting his feelings. Fourthly, undiscovered self. This is most potentially explosive situation. The person does not know about himself or herself and does not know about the other. In other words, there is much misunderstanding and interpersonal conflict is almost sure to result. Strategies for interpersonal conflict resolution. There are rule of thumb, more simple guidelines that can be followed to manage interpersonal conflict, such as be active listener, identify the source of conflict, Focus on the topic, not personalities. Address conflict in a timely way. Learn from conflict. Although these guidelines are simpler to read but difficult to follow. However, most conflict resolution not only in relationship but also in workplace. Where these three basic strategies can be applicable. These are the lose-lose, win-lose or win-win approaches. Lose-lose. In lose-lose means that both parties lose. One of the more common approaches is to compromise or take the middle ground in a dispute. Win-lose situation Results wherein one party in a conflict situation attempts to marshal its forces to win and the other party lose. Thus, win-lose outcomes are less likely to be accepted voluntarily. Win-win outcomes occur when each side of a dispute feels they have won. Since both sides benefit from such a scenario, any resolutions to be conflict are likely to be accepted voluntarily. The process of integrative bargaining aims to achieve through cooperation win-win outcomes. Personal development is a lifelong process. The influencing factors are multi but in this chapter we focused on only two of the factors that is self-identity and secondly, the human relationships. To understand the concept of self that encompasses personal identity that 
defines our unique character that separate us from others. Whereas social identity, what in the society that defines us. And finally, self-esteem, how we evaluate ourselves. Do we see ourselves in a positive or negative way? Eric Erikson theory on self-identity that he divided it into eight stages from birth, late adulthood and crisis we go through and if it results we learn our virtue or if we are unable to overcome it results into a conflict or problematic behavior. Human relationships are also known as interpersonal relationship is a relationship between two or more people. It might be formal or informal for short or long duration. Some of the common types of relationships are between child parent, romantic partners, friends, siblings and also between employees. Interpersonal conflict may arise from various factors. Most of them is due attribution of personal factors and these conflicts can be resolved using either one of the resolutions such as lose-lose, win-lose, win-win. Thank you. Mm -hmm.